Hello, this is the AI Lab. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Alexander Poikert, Professor of Civil Law and Commercial Law with a specific focus on international intellectual property law at Goethe University in Frankfurt. He was also last year's chair of the European Copyright Society, a platform of academics set up to encourage critical and independent scholarly thinking on European copyright law and policy. The reason? A recent primer written by Alexander on copyright in the Artificial Intelligence Act, published in June 2024 in the Journal of European and International IP Law. Let's hear what Alexander has to say. Thank you so much for being with us today, Alexander. Uh, let me start with my first question. So you analyze how the AI Act merges copyright law, which focuses on private private property rights with AI regulations that address broader public safety and ethical standards. Could you elaborate on the challenges of merging these logics, you know, copyright laws on the one hand and AI regulation on the other, and how this might affect future legislation and potentially complicate maybe compliance and enforcement? Yes, indeed. Uh, copyright is property. Uh, it is enforced by the right holder according to his or her will. So the right holder decides on whether to grant a license or whether to enforce or not to enforce. Uh, on the other hand, the AI Act is not based on the logic of a right, but the AI Act establishes obligations. Obligations uh, in order to protect public interests. Yeah? to support trustworthy artificial intelligence, to have a safe AI environment in the European Union. And that is um, a way of regulation that German lawyers would call public law approach to artificial um, intelligence. And that results in quite some legal uh, challenges, I would say, for the future. So uh, if you think about uh, the infringement or violation of either copyright or the AI uh, Act, uh, these questions have to be answered uh, on very uh, different terms. Any copyright infringement triggers remedies, yeah? even if it's only one single copy which was not authorized, you have a remedy, you can ask for an injunction and damages. In the AI Act context, it's very different uh, because uh, the AI Act establishes systemic compliance obligations with regard to copyright. For example, AI model providers have to put in place a copyright policy, a general copyright policy. And whether that copyright policy is sufficient or not is then a question which is pretty difficult to answer and not straightforward, like in the case of copyright, where every infringement, as I said, triggers a remedy. So uh, when we merge copyright with the AI regulation, and by the way, this is also true for the Digital Services Act, you have to approach the question in a different manner. Namely, you have to ask, at what point is a systemic compliance obligation uh, violated? And only then uh, do you have a violation of, of this AI regulation. Uh, and also the enforcement of copyright on the one hand and the AI Act on the other uh, differ very much. Um, copyright is enforced by the right holder before the civil courts regularly. Every infringement can be enforced. Uh, whereas the AI Act is primarily enforced by public authorities, by the Commission, when it comes to AI models um, uh, or uh, national uh, authorities. And that might become a challenge for right holders because they were used to enforce their rights at their will, but now they have to make sure that the Commission acts uh, if they find an AI model to be problematic or national authorities when it comes to AI systems insofar as uh, copyright obligations exist. So that's a whole new, I would say, set up of enforcement challenges. Right holders have to 
become part of the AI governance network and make sure that they are at the table of the commission and um, make sure that the commission acts against uh, certain uh, copyright problems in the area of AI. Uh, so uh, I would say for the first time, really public authorities enter the copyright environment uh, to a very significant extent through the AI Act. Thank you. That's uh, that's very clear. And I think basically there's going to be a creation of new habits for the right holders uh, in the pipe. Now, looking at those um, copyright related obligations in the AI Act, um, your article details their scope of application and discusses the implications for AI providers in terms of operational compliance and potential legal exposure. So. Who are the main targets of the AI Act's copyright-related obligations? The targets are only providers of general purpose AI models. And that will become or is now a technical term, which is also defined in the AI Act in the long list of definitions. And it is very important to understand that the specific copyright obligations, on which we will say a little bit more in a minute, uh, only are only addressed to these general purpose model providers. So it would be, in my understanding, open AI um, providing, developing, and uh, also putting on the market the GPT, the, um, the transformers, right? The generative pre-trained transformers. That would be a model upon which AI systems are then built, for example, jet, chatbots or other AI systems, but the, the copyright obligations are only addressed to the model providers. And the model, in my understanding, underlies the systems that are then built upon it, uh, various systems, systems to generate text or pictures or videos or what have you. But the providers of these systems, which eventually create the output, are not subject to the specific uh, copyright obligations. Instead, it's only, in a way, the, the model providers. Uh, and that can only be explained, in my view, also uh, through the history of, of the emergence of the AI Act, which was um, very dynamic, um, influenced by the emergence of ChatGBT and other AI models and systems. Uh, and the EU legislature said, uh, we focus on the models because they are the very um, basis of all the systems and if we target them uh, so the very basic level then we make sure that any kind of system generative ai will be copyright compliant uh, um, but uh, obviously uh, this might also create challenges which i might address in a second when we come to the obligations in question thank you so you know, initially the GPAI was referred to as foundational models. That's what you refer to, the fact that they're, you know, they're really the foundation of the house and by addressing that they think they can handle the whole house, let's say. Um, your paper uh, explores the legal framework established by the AI Act for enforcing copyright compliance um, and including, you mentioned, the use of state-of-the-art technologies and public transparency of training data. Um, so what are uh, the key copyright-related obligations for AI model providers under the AI Act, especially uh, concerning the training content summary and opt-out obligations for text and data mining? And how do you think these, um, should these be implemented uh, in, in, let's say, an efficient manner? Yes. The, the statutory language contains two obligations which are clearly aimed at copyright. Um, one uh, is uh, a general obligation to implement a copyright policy and 
as an example of this copyright policy that model providers have to put in place, the Act mentions a policy to respect uh, opt-outs of right holders from the data mining. So that is uh, the most explicit connection between copyright and the AI Act because a EU directive, uh, the directive of 2019 on copyright in the digital single market, contains a provision according to which a text and data mining is lawful even without the authorization of right holders whose works are mined. However, if that mining is done for commercial purposes, right holders can opt out of that mining. Um, and um, the AI Act now establishes an obligation for AI model providers to um, uh, program their bots, their crawlers who crawl the internet uh, to uh, collect data for the training of the AI, to program these bots in a manner that the opt-out of copyright holders is respected. So um, the provision is kind of a prohibition to circumvent such uh, uh, robot ex exclusion protocols or similar uh, technical measures to prevent mining. Yeah? Uh, and the idea behind this is, uh, at the end of the day, to allow right holders to uh, authorize or not. Uh, the mining of their content for the AI training and potentially also monetize their content. And I understand that this already uh, takes place. So there's a market for AI uh, training data, uh, which is based on these copyright rules in connection with the AI Act. Uh, but the AI Act goes beyond this in that it generally says uh, you have to put in place a copyright policy. And it is unclear at the moment what this uh, includes. In my article, I uh, indicate that one potential consequence of this rule might be a kind of moderation obligation. So that you have to make sure that not only the training was copyright compliant, but also the output, the eventual output is copyright compliant. But then you enter a kind of paradox because who can control the output of an AI? My understanding is that uh, this is controlled by the provider of the AI system. So the chatbot, uh, the, you know, the, the more concrete AI that generates the output. But that actor might be separate uh, from the model provider. And if that is the case, and, you know, it's not vertically integrated, the whole AI um, industry, um, it might become uh, difficult for the AI model provider to moderate the output of systems that another company has built on the basis of the model. So there I see a potential problem in the uh, implementation of these copyright Mm, obligations. And then uh, you have the third obligation, uh, which is mentioned in the Act, which is the training uh, content summary that has to be provided. This was originally the first idea of the European Parliament, uh, then addressed to foundation models, uh, in order to enable the right holders to find out, well, has my database been covered? What has been mine? Yeah. Uh, and this is the idea of, of, of the obligation to uh, also publish this summary. The summary uh, need not be uh, granular so that you mention each and every URL that you have mined, uh, but uh, it suffices to describe the content in a narrative way. So what kind of databases have you searched or crawled? Was it the open internet or any specific uh, databases? And that, again, is a tool to enable right holders uh, to figure out whether they were mined and perhaps uh, whether their preventive measures were circumvented and then you could potentially uh, also sue for copyright infringement. Thank you, that's that's very clear. Um, I, I had a shudder when you said content moderation of, of, of outputs. <laughs> 
um, especially knowing that not only it's probably the systems that will do the output, but they will not know the context uh, in which the output is generated, which is going to be interested in terms of exceptions and limitations. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Thank you so much for your contribution. I encourage everyone that wants to know more about the AI Act and copyright to read your article. It's really very didactic and very clear. And uh, we look forward to seeing how these things develop, uh, certainly the copyright policies, how the AI office will um, help with producing that. And um, thank you again for participating in our podcast. Thank you for having me.